Gaming on the go, especially high quality PC gaming on the go, used to be tough. If you ever wanted to take the power of Ryzen and Windows 11 and put it into a handheld, your wait is over. Luckily, there are multiple PC gaming handhelds on the scene now, and today, we'll run down everything you need to know about the ROG Ally from ASUS. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and you are watching DIY in 5. The show where we make tech accessible to the everyday user, all in a video that's approximately five minutes or less. Today, we are talking about the ASUS ROG Ally. The Ally is meant to allow you to take your games everywhere and play them in high fidelity, all without needing to bring a massive setup. And when I say games, I mean Steam, PC Game Pass, and Game Pass Ultimate, the Epic Game Store, the EA app, GOG Galaxy 2.0, and Android's App Store, just to name a few. Impressive, isn't it? Okay, so the Ally has an outstanding game library, but let's talk hardware. The Ally boasts a seven inch IPS panel with a 16 by nine aspect ratio and a 1920 by 1080p resolution. With 500 nits of brightness, seven millisecond response time and a 120 hertz refresh rate plus free sync, this tiny display with Gorilla Glass Victus is no joke. The buttons are tactile and feel more premium than expected, and there's even two paddles on the back, in addition to two joysticks, ABXY buttons, and a D-pad. Also, placement in relation to the screen has proven that ASUS has given ergonomics quite a bit of thought. The joysticks have LED rings around them, and the look of the device overall, both front and back, serves that gamer aesthetic while still looking sleek and sophisticated. The power button is also a fingerprint sensor for easy Windows login. And most importantly for the long gaming sessions, the ASUS ROG Ally is not too heavy or large. Previous handheld PC gaming prototypes over the years have been large and unwieldy, so I was pleasantly surprised when picking up the Ally for the first time. In terms of the innards of this beast, the Ally comes in two spec configurations. One with the AMD Ryzen Z1 processor and one with the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Both processors are built on the four nanometer process with Zen 4 architecture and brand new RDNA 3 graphics, upscaled with the help of AMD's upscaling FSR and Radeon Super Resolution as well. The Ryzen Z1 boasts six cores and 12 threads while the Z1 Extreme has eight cores and 16 threads. And in my testing so far, the Ryzen Z1 has been more than capable. So I'm excited to see what the Z1 Extreme can do. In fact, Anim Tech found that the Ryzen Z1 Extreme outperformed the Apple M1 by 10% in single core performance and 38% in multi-core performance. The Ryzen Z1 Extreme was also 3% faster than the M2 Max in single core performance. Both models have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM and 512 gigabytes PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD onboard storage, expandable via microSD. Connectivity wise, we're looking at a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for audio, although the Ally supports Bluetooth connectivity for audio as well, a Type-C combo port with support for USB 3.2 Gen 2 and DisplayPort 1.4, a micro SD card slot and an ROG XG mobile interface if you wanted to connect ASUS's eGPU for some extra graphical power. As much as there is to love about the ROG Ally, and believe me, I do, battery life is a legitimate concern. The Ally has three different power modes, silent, performance, and turbo. While you get the best performance in turbo mode, you'll burn through your battery if not plugged in quickly. Silent keeps the fan silent and power consumption low to extend battery life, but you'll see a noticeable difference in performance, especially in AAA games. Performance mode is a balance of the two. These operating modes are easily changed via the command center in Armory Crate SE, which has its own dedicated button on the front of the device. This command center also lets you adjust a multitude of settings, remap buttons, monitor your performance, limit frames, and more. Also accessed via a dedicated button is the game library, which puts all your games in one place rather than having to use separate launchers, which is very convenient. Other than that, a gripe I've heard some users mention is that Windows 11 is a bit tricky to navigate on the device if you aren't already familiar with PC gaming, especially during the initial setup. Depending what games you play, you may be looking at installing a few different launchers to install and play your games 
Then you'd have to add them to your game's library to have a more intuitive experience. My other personal gripe is that the exhaust fans at the top tend to be hot if playing on turbo and plugged in for a longer period. Your hands shouldn't really be placed in that position anyway, smart design for sure, but if you need to grab the top, just be careful. Note that if you wanted to take your handheld and use it as a traditional gaming PC, there's support for a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and multiple controllers, so you'd be all set. I'd maybe invest in that eGPU though if I was going to go that route. All right, everyone, we are about out of time, but if you have any further thoughts on the ROG Ally or questions, feel free to comment below. Like if you found this video helpful and sub for more tips. My name's Trisha Hirschberger and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.